This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create these very simple vectorized progress rings using Inkscape. So we'll go ahead and get started here. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear darkened with these custom icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description section of the video. So the first thing we want to do is set up our document. So we'll go to File, Document Properties, and I'm just going to make sure the display units is set to PX for pixels, and I'm going to turn off this uh, show page border. We'll close out of that. We'll go to view, make sure we have custom selected, and then we'll zoom in at one to one. And what I'm gonna do now is open up the align and distribute menu with this button here. And then I'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button there. So the first thing we're gonna do is draw a, a circle. So I'm gonna grab the circles and ellipses tool, hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle like that. And what I want to do now is get rid of the fill color and give this circle an outline, otherwise known as a stroke. So to get rid of the fill color, I'm just going to click this X over here to turn that off. And to give it uh, a stroke, I'm going to hold shift and click on the color black to give that an outline like that. Um, your, your outline may be a different thickness than mine is, but that's okay. We're going to go edit that now over here in the uh, stroke style menu. So what I'm going to do in the stroke style menu is I'm going to change the uh, the units of measurement over here to px for pixels and then I'm going to change the width of this to I'd say maybe 50 see how that looks uh, yours depending on which resolution your screen is set at 50 may look different for you than it does for me on on, on my screen just uh, any size really should work so I'm, I'm just gonna go with 50 here if you can go with something that looks similar just eyeball it that should be fine and where it says join we want to make sure that this is a rounded join and where it says cap we want that to be a rounded cap and what I want to do now is uh, I'm gonna set the background of this graphic actually I'm gonna go to file and document properties and down here where it says background color, I'm gonna open that up and under the HSL tab, I'm gonna make this a very deep shade of blue. Uh, let me bring this over here like that. Let me bring down the, uh, the saturation a bit, bring down the lightness, make this a little more blue, maybe something like that. If you'd like to use exact the exact uh, RGBA I'm using, it's 0D101700. Otherwise, any deep shade like that should work. And we go ahead and close out of that. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to copy that. Just highlight that and hit Control C. And go ahead and close out of that. And then close out of this. And I'm going to come over here to Stroke Paint and I'm going to make this ring the same color. So I'm going to come over here to where it says RGBA and just paste that in by hitting Control V. And I want to take this A row down here. Under the HSL tab, I want to take this A row and bring this all the way up. And then I want to take the lightness, the next row, which is the L. I'm going to slide that to the right a little bit. Just to make that a little, you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm gonna slide it to the left to make it a little darker like that. That's what we want to do. Um, so we want it to be pretty much the same color as the background, but just slightly darker. And that's gonna be the background ring. Uh, and what I'll do next is I'm gonna grab the select tool, and I'm going to duplicate this ring by hitting Control D. And if you notice, we have two copies of that there now. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's go back to the circle tool. And with this new circle selected, I'm gonna give this a different color because this is gonna be the progress ring. So I'm gonna come down here to the color picker. Instead of giving this a flat shade, I'm gonna give it a nice gradient. So I'll come down here to the color picker. I'm gonna find like a, a pink shade like that. I'll hold shift and click on that to make it fill in that color. If you don't hold shift, it fills in the actual circle. So we wanna make sure we hold shift when we click on it to give it that shade. And then under the stroke paint tab, I'm going to click this box right here that says linear gradient and it's going to give this a gradient and I'm going to click on this stop right here this little circle to the far right and I'm going to make this uh, like a deep shade of purple maybe something like that maybe a little there we go something like that's a little better and I'm going to take this node and bring this towards the bottom and I'll take this node and bring this towards the top and I'm going to hold control so it locks it onto the vertical axis so it goes straight up like that and what I want to do now is I'm going to hold control and just roll down the mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. Let me grab the select tool and click off of this to deselect everything. We now have our progress ring and the background ring set there. So what we want to do is change the progress, like the amount of progress for each, for, for, uh, each ring. So let me click on this. I'll go to the uh, circle tool. And if you notice with the circle tool selected, you're going to see this other little round node here. And if you click and drag that, you can change uh, sort of like, I guess that's the, uh, the radius of the circle. 
Uh, if you bring the cursor outside of the circle, it's going to create like this pie chart effect. But if you bring the cursor inside the circle, it's just going to change the line like that. So what I'm going to do is, since I want to, I want this to be a progress ring and not a, a pie chart, I'm going to keep the cursor inside of the circle. And then I'm going to hold control. And if you hold control, it'll lock it to 15 degree increments. So I could have it exactly 25% or... Uh, 50%, 75%, and so on. So I'm gonna leave this right here at 50%, 75% uh, like that. And I'm gonna grab the select tool. And uh, actually, you know what, let me grab the text tool. And I'll just type in there, 75%. Uh, let me make that a light shade so you can actually see it. Grab the select tool and just hold Control and Shift and scale it up. I'm gonna change the font of that by going to the text editor over here. And let me make that a little smaller. Uh, I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna use Lado. Make that a little bigger. And I'm just gonna center this up within the circle by holding shift and clicking on the circle so we have both the text and the circle selected. And where it says relative to in the align panel, just make sure we have that set to last selected. And we'll center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. And then we can click off of it to deselect everything. So we now have the first ring, which is 75%. And let me click and drag over all of that. I'm gonna duplicate that by hitting Control D. And then I'll hold Control and just click and drag these over to the right. And click off of that to deselect. Uh, I'll go back to the circle tool and I could change this one as well now. I could take this node right here and just uh, click and drag it and then hold Control so it locks it onto those angles. And just bring it down to 50% like that. And now I can go back to the text tool and click on the text and change that to 50%. And go back to the select tool, click and drag over all of those, hit control D to duplicate them, hold control, click and drag this over to the right, click off of that to deselect everything, and as you can imagine, I'm going to make this one 25%. So, like I did previously, go to the circle tool, grab this node over here, hold control so it locks onto those axes. Make sure the cursor is going inside of the circle and not outside of it. Once it's inside, we can go like that, and there we have that. And what I'm going to do now is let me grab the select tool and click off of everything. Uh, we, you, we now have different progress rings. Uh, if you want, you could save these as an SVG and import them into After Effects and animate them if you'd like. Or you can animate them with Blender, I'm sure. I wouldn't know how to do that, but I have seen it done before. One thing I'd like to mention, though, before I wrap up the video is that the next time you go to use the Circles and Ellipses tool, it's going to be creating circles. It's not going to be creating circles. It's going to be creating a segment of a circle. So what you want to do is go ahead and create a circle. And then just click this icon up here, up here that says make the shape a whole ellipse and not an arc or segment. Go ahead and click that and then it'll make it an actual circle. Because if not, um, it, it can be pretty annoying when you want to go make a circle and then you end up with that uh, little segment like that. So just make sure to go do that. Uh, you could always change the uh, type of circle it is up here. Even if you're not happy with how this came out, you can change that. You can go to the cir uh, circle tool and change that up here in this menu. And the same thing with rectangles as well. You can give it rounded corners, or you can just click on this button up here to make it make the corners sharp. And that, that should pretty much do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about creating those vectorized progress rings using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.